The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. Well, largely, we saw two-sided action. It felt like in that grain and oil seed trade on Thursday, livestock finished with a mixed tone as well. Stocks, of course, setting uh, records on Thursday's session and uh, really a lot of fireworks. It felt like over there with everything else kind of quiet, but we got a few different things to take a look at here, especially soybeans hanging above that $12 mark on the board. So that's something that is uh, nice to see. We're going to talk about the market trade here today on the show. Joining us, Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor at Total Farm Marketing. Brian, always good to talk with you, sir. And, uh, you know, kind of like I said, there was a bit of a quiet two-sided day. Nothing bad, nothing really good. Just kind of finished with a, a little bit of green uh, in the grain and oil seed trade, Brian. Yeah, you know, it's... Um... It's an odd time of year for the grains because you really don't have enough weather to, to really have an impact. Um, and even if you did, it's still March, right? Yeah. And uh, and up my way, where I'm from here in Wisconsin, we didn't have snow all winter except for one kind of dump. And then that disappeared pretty quick. Looks like we might get another dump again. So <laughs> heading towards spring and here it comes. But it's been relatively dry. Export sales in the grain complex, good for corn, 46.7, uneventful at 18 million for beans and wheat, negative 4 million. And that's a reflection of those cancellations from last week. And so the market, you know, the grains have hung in there. They finished in positive territory in corn, beans and wheat today. No complaints there, considering they really didn't have much new news. Uh, it does look like we're starting to, or not starting to, we're seeing more reflection of perhaps managed money edging out. Corn's got a nice looking technical picture this week. Um, soybeans, just as impressive. Day like today, you kind of scratch your head though. Finishing three, four cents higher, you feel pretty good about that until you notice they were 15 plus higher. Mm -hmm. but they also went negative. So another small victory for beans today. And to your point, holding above the $12 mark in May, 12.12. And then November, new crop, 12.04. Um, don't know if there's a lot of upside to the beans yet, though. Uh, that's that's going to have to come in the form of something. That something seems to be the uh, palm oil and soybean oil and canola markets lately. Yeah. And I, I wonder, Brian... Maybe some farmers selling in beans, maybe capping some of this rally here, possibly. I, I heard some chatter. Some of the lines got kind of long here the last day or so with beans rallying like they have been. So I, maybe that's something going on in this bean market, too. I don't know what you think about that, Brian. No doubt. I think that's exactly what's happening. You've got a nice, uh, you know, bounce off of a pretty stiff downturn in bean prices. And, and just to go through sort of, uh, sort of a quick visual if we use the May contract, May beans back in November were peaking at over 14. Then you drop all the way down to just over 11.20, and now you bounce back a buck. That's going to pull some beans out of farmers' hands. There's a lot of, you know, this is where prices were here at the end of January. There's a lot of hand wringing all that way down. They, well, I should have sold, I should have sold. But now the calendar is somewhat against farmers because you've got South American beans more and more available to the world market. Um, Argentina may be a little wet for harvest, but I wouldn't jump it to conclusion that we're going to be short beans out of Argentina. Brazil looks like that crop is stabilized. So nice bounce, likely farmers selling in both corn and beans. Well, thinking about it too, it feels like these grains could maybe go a little bit sideways here without a some sort of uh, story, news story to drive them because, you know, a, a week from now, we're going to be talking prospective plantings and quarterly grain stocks reports from USDA. And those reports we know are known for their surprises and volatility. And so I, I think maybe largely we could already start seeing some of this grain trade squaring up positions ahead of next week, Brian. I think that's very likely and very possible. Not only are we going to talk about prospective plantings, we're going to actually start to talk about plantings because mm -hmm. 
unless it, unless the weather forecast really throws a wrench in this. There's uh, one farmer told me, he said, I drove up from Florida and boy, did I see the tractors and um, planters and everything just ready to go outside, just waiting. And uh, farmers, once they get past that uh, early plant date, I think they're wide open. So, so it's that time of year and that'll happen. The, the you know, the corn export sales, I'll come back to that, was, again, pretty solid today. There's, it's, it's a pretty constant solid demand market in corn, and the market has responded here as of late. It is up against some resistance points, though. We're right up against the 50-day moving average. It did slip through it today, came back and closed under. Then I like to use the Bollinger Band. It's up against that as well. Um, so not a bad-looking chart but not a real good looking chart either considering this recovery is only a small percentage of what the market gave back since it peaked that back on October 20th. Yeah. And I, I wonder with this corn market too, it, to me, it's felt like there could be a little more upside in corn versus soybeans. I mean, just looking at charts and things like that, but um, you know, it, it's hard to say, like you said, to your point, it's that time of year where we don't really have a, major weather story we're watching to get planting going it's just it's kind of that odd time of year for the grain trade it's a, almost a lull type of period isn't it brian well it is uh it, there just isn't enough weather to talk and uh, yeah so we could talk about safrina corn i would say the weather may be turned a little better this week for it we can talk about our summer weather and sort of this growing let's call it theme by by many that this El Nino pattern is quickly going to flip to La Nina by midsummer, which should usher in, in theory, warmer, drier conditions on top of a dry Midwest and a warm winter already. So, so, so that's all in the future though. Right now there just isn't enough to talk there from a strategy perspective though. We've been arguing this for several weeks. You know, we call it the handwriting on the wall. You had a very big bullish key reversal on corn prices at low levels at what we call the bargain. So any end user out there really don't fall asleep at the switch here. Things can and do change and it's okay to make the assumption we'll have average crops until proven otherwise, but the until proven otherwise, the market may already pick up 50 cents or a dollar in corn and anticipating that it might prove otherwise. So, so really think about the risk management perspective uh, and the value perspective. We talked about value, that it's good for the operation. Uh, you can debate what you did no matter where the market goes. Uh, we talked about value last fall when prices were higher, and especially last January, February for new crop corn. So really look at the value proposition as an end user and really think about, uh, you know, plentiful supplies right now could be plentiful down the road, or what if they're not? Got to look at that scenario. Dollar index was higher on Thursday as well. I have to think that was in relation to all-time highs in stocks. You know, we had the Fed meeting this week, no change. Everyone looking through their comments, talking about the dot plot, things like that. I mean, I guess overall, it, it didn't feel like, it felt like the dollar was maybe a headwind and it felt like that a lot of the money flow was into the stock market on Thursday and kind of ignored the grain and livestock trade, Brian. Yeah, it kind of seemed like that. And the money flows definitely into the equities. It's definitely into, you know, new highs in the in the stock markets. The, those type of things where, um, you know, the market's moving. Now, dollar was up. Expectations are that the dollar uh, interest rates stay, uh, well, Paul said they stay for now. Expectations are that, you know, they'll lower them at some point. But, you know, this has been kind of, push back and push back and push back so so it's interesting that uh you know the market is you know on a on a run right now um i don't know you know from the interest uh, from inflationary perspective it seems like the fed is cautiously optimistic that inflation is gradually becoming more and more under control um i don't know talk to the shopper or the consumer might be one of the problems we have with the dairy market right now can't get rid of cheap cheese who eats cheese? A lot of people who, you know, buy pizzas and things like that. Uh, consumers might be a little tight on their budgets. No, that's a great, great point. Let's talk a little bit about that dairy market trade here too, Brian, and uh, get us uh, caught up to speed, some thoughts of things you're watching in the dairy trade here this week. Right. So we've been kind of on this theme of declining cows, right? And then all of a sudden yesterday's milk production report comes out and says, oh, 
cows increased 10,000 last month in the nation. A little bit of a surprise there. The milk production per cow was up 60 pounds. And everything's relative. It was really beat up last February. So they're comparing it to last February. But it didn't, the, the theme of the report wasn't, oh my gosh, friendly producers are getting rid of cows. So there's sort of this, well, what's going on in the dairy industry? And one, it's just really sluggish demand, both exports on the, on, in particular, the cheese. We saw the global dairy trade was off this week. And then we saw the production report was a little bit higher uh, and the market's responding by moving lower. Um, cheese prices just can't, they can't clear the product right now, apparently. So, so, you know, the market may have to go lower to to clear the product. What's interesting though, is we've seen this um, kind of this trend toward um, uh, producers, well, following the money trail. So where do you make more money? You make more money breeding a cow or heifer to a beef, beef animal. Having that beef drop on the ground, that beef calf is worth more than a dairy at this point. And in, in particular, if you look at the dairy uh, heifer business, uh, boy, there's just a growing concern that there's not any relief in sight for the shortfall of heifers. So ultimately, that should provide underlying support. Uh, but the market just can't kind of get out of the blocks. It has a few sharp rallies and then it sells off. So so it's really a demand issue right now, we think, in the market. Um, milk has been a, a, a historically a, a, a commodity that when it gets cheap, it cures itself. And when it gets expensive, it cures itself. So we like to think we're, you know, close to a bottom, but boy, uh, the way cheese traded here today, I'm a little concerned. We had blocks and barrels, both lower. Uh, we had some leftover offering offerings, uh, barrels, $147, $47 a pound or $1470 hundredweight. And then, uh, uh, cheese at 139 Gosh, you add those two together, divide it by two, and then look at the front month on futures. Um, milk futures could yet be overpriced because they should about match 10 times the, the cheese price. So tough, tough industry right now. We are joined today by Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. And uh, Brian, you brought up uh, some good thoughts there. And it's thinking about beef on dairy and, and dairy heifer retention and you know, thinking about over on, on just the cattle side in general, um, you know, watching cattle go a bit sideways. we got a fairly big on-feed report expected here on Friday afternoon. And, you know, I'm wondering how much of maybe some of that beef on dairy could start to play a role later this year as we try to rebuild the herd and, and things like that. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting dynamic, I would say across the entire livestock industry mainly between cattle and dairy right now that that bears watching in the months ahead brian oh yeah it, it does and it, it, one of the uh, you know, there's so many questions that are unanswered like can, can the consumer pick up beef values at these prices now we had higher prices even last fall but it seems like we've really kind of stagnated out the same thing with feeder contracts they've just gone flatline for several months in a row now and the market doesn't seem to be willing to chase that. We, we know there's tighter supply of beef, and we know that's not going to cure itself real soon. And, and that goes back years and years of droughty conditions and poor pasture conditions and, and just trimming the herd and high input costs, high grain prices. So the herd will likely grow, but it's going to be probably at a slow pace. So now it's just a whether, whether or not demand can keep up. And things like, well, do we do we get enough coming out of dairy cows to really make a difference? It certainly helps the herd, but you're only talking nine million dairy cows, and you're talking multiples and multiples of the beef cow industry. So, um, so it's a uh, th the, the beef market seems to be well supported, supply driven. The question is, can demand drive it higher from this point? And it seems to be failing. Um, and then we'll see you know, cattle on feed, but I don't think that's going to tell us anything wildly different than we already know. Yeah. Well, and to that point, you know, it feels like we are kind of failing up here at some of these levels and have gone sideways in cattle and the same story in the hog market too. It just feels like technical overhead type of resistance that it doesn't feel like we have enough juice, so to speak in, in this livestock trade to push through some of these overhead levels, whether I'm talking cattle, hogs, et cetera, it just doesn't feel like there's enough there 
to give us that extra oomph, so to speak, to, to move higher, Brian. Yeah, and, and just a case in point, the hog market is kind of stuck right now as well, but the deferred months did have some oomph, okay? So, you know, trading down in the low 90s at the beginning of the year and all of a sudden, you know, up over 105, but we talked about that last week, that those are really good prices. So all of a sudden they've fallen off of that and you're down closer to 102. So you take about a $3 hit, still really good prices, but technically may have been bruised here. Closes today, you know, pretty rough day in the hog market. You've got closes today um, under the 21 day moving average for a lot of contracts that hasn't happened uh, for almost uh well six weeks Fe february early second week of february so really good surge it just are can we you know can again the market sustain dollar five hogs into the summer mm, i i doubt it and you know this continuing theme where the front months are lower suggests that those summer months could be vulnerable to a drop so still go ahead and hedge those uh those markets Brian, good stuff as always. Final thoughts from you. Anything you want to share or reiterate to folks, any risk management type of thoughts, et cetera. Uh, what do you want to add final here on the show today? Yeah, so let's just kind of take a big big picture look at corn and soybeans in particular. Uh, not a robust export year. Low prices, but we've bounced. And you got, you got you know, $12 beans in the new crop and old crop. And then you've got corn. December corn 480 today. Now recognize that carry out, even with smaller acres in corn at this point will likely be bigger in the year ahead than it, it than it was this fall. And this fall or this early winter, we saw the board get to under $4. So there has to be a starting point for you somewhere on corn for new crop. This 475, 480, I would say get something started, whether it's some forward sales, hedge arrives, maybe some puts or a fence buy, put, sell a call. Um, one scenario is this is about all the better we can get. And then we, we drift and we drift and we drift. A um, lot of weather ahead of us, but I wouldn't get over my skis too far. And the same thing with beans, $12 beans. I mean, the reflection on beans is the same as in corn. Corn carryout could be 2.4, 2.5 billion. That's probably $4 corn on the board. Beans, uh, who knows? That carryout could be 450 million, 500 million. That could be pretty negative for beans. That would suggest probably less than $11 beans. So, so from a big picture perspective, you know, the calendar continues to move along. It's now March. Just be ready to get things done. Well, if folks have questions, they want to reach out to you there at Total Farm Marketing. Multiple ways to get in touch with you, Brian. How could folks reach you? Yeah, multiple ways. So the best way I, I, I prefer is a phone call, 800-334-9779. Uh, There's a couple of Brian's. If you want to talk to me, it's Brian with a Y. Same thing with email, Brian with a Y at TotalFarmMarketing.com or jump on our website, TotalFarmMarketing.com. Take a look at us and you can contact us that way as well. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. Always a pleasure, sir. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Jesse, thank you, and good luck to everyone. Uh, I know spring's right around the corner. Everybody's going to get busy. Just keep it safe. And that is a definitely a good thing to keep in mind for sure. I'll echo that sentiment. That's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us at markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.